Hey guys, Levi here with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're gonna to be tying a rear floating squid. This is a really, really, really awesome squid pattern designed by Bob Popovics. It kind of looks in the water unlike any other squid, and it has a real good profile and real good swim to it. You'll see once we get on into it. We're gonna get started off the vise with uh, some 3 4 inch foam cylinders from River Road Creations. These are gonna be color white. I'm gonna grab one of these and our first step is to, we're gonna cut eh, probably about an inch off the end of it. You can save that. It's a good banger head for another one of Bob Popovics's fly patterns. So once we have that, we're gonna move in here with this uh, silver tape. It's a tape used for like lures, that sort of thing, but it does work really well for this fly. So I wanna come in, I'm gonna place this right on there and I'm just gonna roll it down at least once, but if you cover it a second time, you just get a little extra uh, security on that. Cut that off and seal it in. And then I'll move into my actual fly tying scissors. I'm gonna just cut that straight and then cut along there. It looks like I'm kind of botching this, but we're gonna clean it up like so. When I trim this, I just use the foam as a guide and trim all the way around. You want to make this as neat as you can, but it ultimately doesn't make a huge difference, I would assume. Roll this on until you're happy with it. This is going to be the clean side. We're going to use that up front of the fly. And from there, we're going to move into these. I think they're Ooh. Adhesive eyes. These are the 3D ones, but I went ahead and took the 3D off so they're nice and flat. And what I'm looking for is that line on the tape. I'm gonna get that right on there. It's gonna just provide a little extra security to your fly. All right, so now that we have one on one side, we're gonna fold it and put it right on the other side. You can do your best to match them up. And if you want them to be additionally stuck on there. You can hit them with some adhesive. And what we did with these is, this is these 3D dome eyes, but you'll see here shortly, they don't, geez, it's not even coming off. They don't quite have the ability to stick on the side because of this 3D aspect. So what I did was just broke that 3D part right off and you'll get a nice flat eye simply because we just didn't have the flat ones in stock at the time of tying this. Let's try it. Get in there with your bodkin, right once you separate it. And there's your flat adhesive eye right there, minus the 3D, and that's perfect for this. We're using big eyes because squid do tend to have a pretty large eye if you look at them. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we need to put a hole right in the middle of this cylinder. And my hands tend to not be super straight, so I don't like to heat my bodkin up first. Instead, I'll work this through on one side, flip it over, get it on that side right in the middle, and I'll eventually get these two to meet. There we go, I got lucky on the first try. And that's nice and centered, and what I do instead of again, heating the bodkin up first. I'll just heat it up now, pull this through. I'm not looking to really bore a hole in there because I want the 80 pound mono straight that we're using to fit in there snugly. So that's good now. And our next step is we're gonna put six tentacles on this squid pattern. So we need to put six holes in here. I do this one right here right underneath of it. That's two holes. Then do one here. And then one right over there. And I'll just fill in the gap right there. 
fill in the gap right there. All right, so now that I've got those sort of pre put in place, I'm gonna heat up my bodkin and get in there, send them. And this space will all get covered up with our feathers because we're gonna leave the nice marabou here and that's our next step. So let's get this 80 pound mono straight, put it right through the back and grab our lighter again. We're gonna create a nice little ball on there and I'll just pull that straight down, hit it with my finger. Now that'll be nice and snug for you, it won't go loose. And you can also hit it with some epoxy once we mix that up. All right, so I put two more holes in here, made an even eight, just because that's gonna give me some leniency in terms of where my tentacles are gonna go. It's not necessary, but I just kinda wanted to have that option. So from here, we have six pre-selected nice saddle feathers. And what I was looking for with these is I wanted a nice even stem and I wanted some thickness to it because we're gonna put this into some holes and it just helps a little better to have sort of some support. So get those worked out before you mix your epoxy so you're not rushing through that five minute cure time that you have. So from there, we're gonna move into a two part DevCon epoxy. Get yourself out. You don't need a whole lot, but you may as well give yourself enough. When you're mixing epoxy, it's very important to have exactly the same amount from each uh, part. And I'm gonna come in here with my bodkin and just mix this up. I'm using a notepad, which is, or not a notepad, a sticky note, which is another Bob Popovic's idea. It's nice because it sticks and you don't have to worry about it sliding around, so. First things first, I'm gonna get a little bit of epoxy right on that mono and just pull it straight in. That'll seat that nicely and it won't budge or move. From here, I'm gonna grab each saddle, dip it into the epoxy and put it right in the hole. You wanna do this, you know, slowly Take your time. And you also want these feathers to all curve inward. Got two in place and you'll see this starting to come together nicely. that all right so we're just working our way around this we want to create a nice profile to this squid and you'll see once this is all done this looks real sweet I uh, I can't think of a better and more realistic way to tie a squid All right, so now I'm just gonna look over this, make sure we don't have any huge gaps or anything. Make sure these feathers are all facing inward. All right, so now that we have all of our feathers tied in, you'll see we have this real nice set of long flowing tentacles, our mantle here, and that's all done. So we can set that aside while we get into our tying procedure. All right, so now that we have our tentacles and mantle done for this fly, we're gonna move into an Arex 5 op blue water hook. This is a real solid hook, and when you're tying this fly, it's essential to have a strong and heavy hook because the way that this fly is gonna swim is this hook is gonna sink below the water. So when you strip this fly, it's gonna pull down at like a 45 degree angle and it's gonna create a nice bubble trail and then it's gonna float right back up to the surface. Something that 
I don't think you can get from really any other fly pattern. So get in there and tie this down. Make sure your eyes are where they need to be on either side. So from here, moving into some ram's wool, sheep fleece, whatever you want to call it. And now's where I'm going to measure that, like I was saying earlier, because I want this to come right at, towards the end of that foam cylinder, and this is perfect. So I'm going to get in my bodkin, just clean this out a little bit. This is a real nice material, provides instant volume, and it's going to tie this whole fly together nicely. Once this thing's done, you'll see how squid-like it looks. It's a very realistic imitation. So get that cut right at the hide and bring your thread right on back. I'll get in once more and just clean up anything that's sort of disastrous in there. And now we're going to move in there with that sheet fleece and get it tied 360 degrees around the shank. Sort of easy to distribute that, I found, but take your time and make sure that it is fully around the hook shank. And I'm gonna just leave that there because it's gonna add some volume, which is sort of much needed for the profile of a squid. So bring our thread an eye's length or so behind that, and we're gonna grab another patch of sheep's fleece. This one doesn't need to be as long. It's gonna taper in, but cut it close to the hide, no less, and clear out any of those disruptive fibers. I'm gonna pull my thread just a little bit more. We're measuring this. We want it to be a little shorter than that previous bunch, just to sort of create the taper and natural profile of a squid. And squid are a real solid critter, both to imitate. I find them very fun to tie, but they're just one of those things that gets eaten by all game fish, pretty much. They call striped bass squid hounds for a reason, and things like bluefish, things like blue marlin will even eat a, a squid. They're a pretty ubiquitous form of bait. Loosening that just because it's not fully distributed around the shank like I want. All right, I'm okay with that. And I'll get in there. We'll leave that as is. This fleece is just sort of there to create profile rather than be super neat and tidy. All right, so I'm gonna get that ready. We're gonna move in with some bucktail. And when you're selecting your bucktail for this fly, you're gonna want some length to it because we want this to extend just into those feathers at least. So you do need a kind of nice tail on your side. Get in there. Clip it close to the hide. We're using about, it's gonna be about a pencil's width and thickness. A nice even side, or I'm sorry, not even, but a nice solid clump in there. Clean out any of the shorts. Those aren't going to help you out. And straighten those tips. And snip that nice and flush. So measure it to let those tips extend into the feathers if you can, but at least towards the end of that foam cylinder. And we're going to couple loose wraps and distribute this evenly around the hook shank, just like we did with that sheet fleece. We're almost there. I wanna get these fibers on this side. This is sort of just a tedious process. It helps to have thread pressure when you need it and take it off whenever you need to adjust those fibers. And you'll see this looks sort of crazy, but take it out of the vise after you're done tying and soak it in some water and let it hang dry. And you'll definitely like the way it looks after that. 
All right, a few more neatening wraps, and now I'm gonna. So I'm just cleaning this up, getting rid of these fibers here. Hold your thread out of the way. If you guys like what you see today, be sure to hit the like button below. And if you really like what you see, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of these videos that we have coming out of the future. All right, so now that that's nice and clean, we're coming in with one final bunch of bucktail. So get in there. I'm gonna use this more hollow stuff down towards the base because I don't wanna have to hollow tie this. I'm gonna just straight bucktail to see retie it. So I wanna maintain some of that nice hollow characteristics that'll make this flare easily. And we wanna measure it so that it has some taper to it and it's just about 15 to 20% shorter than that first bunch. So again, just like we did with the last one, a few loose wraps and then work those fibers all the way around the shank. This is another genius pattern from Bob Popovics. Like all of his others, that guy is about as smart as it comes whenever we're dealing with fly design. This thing swims beautifully in the water and as you can see, it looks pretty dang close to the real McCoy. All right, so I'm good with that. So now I'm gonna clip these fibers off. Do some final adjusting before we whip finish. And we'll make a nice little head here. If you need, decrease the angle of those fibers at all. Now you can do that with your thread control, but I'm okay with that. that is almost done. If you uh, if you want, you can definitely get in there, dot this all up with some Copic markers or some Sharpies. You can put dots all the way down this to imitate the chromatophores that all squids have. I'm gonna skip that because there's something I just like about a nice clean white squid, but you can certainly get in there with some colors like brown, pink, orange, red even, squid or never lacking in color, but let's go ahead and whip finish that off. That is a rear floating squid. I want to thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.